Well, good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Ella Thorpe. We are here at Tustin Longevity Center. Uh, this is in Tustin, California, Southern California. Uh, we are a group of 10 healthcare providers. We are focused on uh, trying to look at lifestyle, natural, functional, integrative uh, means to try and help our patients. Um, we work integratively. Uh, we use standard medical uh, treatments if required and their testing and all. And we work with our consultants. And uh, we are doing this to entertain questions that are general topics. This is not meant to be individual uh, medical advice uh, for our uh, viewers, but rather a general approach uh, to these questions. If you are a patient uh, here with us, and you do have a question, uh, please do uh, call in to our office, 714-544-1521. You can text your question and also, and your healthcare provider will be notified and you should get a prompt uh, response. But again, uh, these are general questions for information educational purposes. We have the um, emails where we get this uh, throughout the week and then uh, that is dropped off just before uh, we go live. And so um, we also have the uh, chat where you can type in live uh, questions as well. We do ask that you um, try and keep your questions uh, succinct and uh, not lengthy in the sense that we want to try and get as many people in as possible. And we would also um, ask if you get benefit from this, uh, to like and subscribe. Uh, please hit the uh, like button and then uh, please use the comment section, even if it is just for um, annotating uh, what you think or the value of this is. We do have a, um, a conversion of the questions uh, by topical sentences. So if you want to scroll through on our blog, on our website, which is uh, tlcdoctors.com, uh, then you can scroll through and, and kind of peruse through it and to see which ones uh, questions are uh, of more interest to yourself. And we do this every week. Again, we are trying to help build up the health and capacity of uh, our viewers uh, to be the healthiest uh, people out there. Um, we have uh, as well the um, many videos that you can look up on the uh, uh, tlcdoctors.com web website. So um, I have quite a few on the email. I'm going to go to the uh, YouTube uh, chat for the live viewers. So once again, please like and subscribe and then... Um, go ahead and uh, share this with your friends and family, and please make a uh, comment at the end. Uh, I do look at them and I try and respond there also. So on our uh, live chat, uh, Truth Through the Bible says, hi, I've recently been told I'm anemic. My hemoglobin was 7.9 and my iron is 10. Uh, will magnesium supplementation uh, help me more than liquid iron, or should I use both? Uh, I also ordered vitamin B1, and I started uh, vitamin D3 with K2. Well, true through the Bible, uh, I like your, your handle. Um, I am going to say I don't know your age or anything, but uh, I don't know your sex, whether you're male or female. But a hemoglobin of uh, 7.9 is of concern. This obviously uh, is being managed since you know the reading by a healthcare provider that must have ordered this for you. So uh, again, work with your uh, healthcare provider. What I would want to know if uh, I was seeing someone with a 7.9 hemoglobin is typically these are women uh, in the... Uh, uh, perimenopausal, premenopausal phases that are menstruating. And over time, uh, we are finding more and more uh, menstrual irregularities, heavy flow uh, is occurring to younger and younger women. And uh, this disruption 
and irregular bleed is being associated with a diet and recommendations in the diet that are not rich in iron in the diet. For instance, uh, there's a whole campaign out there now that is trying to go to synthetic meats and uh, uh, 3D um, uh, protein productions of uh, 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 meat and various things like this, uh, trying to frighten you away from meat as a healthy uh, part of a, a daily life. And uh, we are also being driven to a high carbohydrate processed food uh, scenario. Therefore, uh, in that light, we are seeing uh, women who have higher carbohydrate, inflammation from the sticky sugars, less good perfusion, which means signaling of our hormones becomes more difficult. Um, the higher your average blood sugar, uh, it, the harder it is for the hormone messages uh, to get through that blizzard of sticky sugars. And yet, um, they're not addressing this. We do this here. We do recommend healthier blood sugar levels, and we're more strict. We want a fasting blood sugar of 85 and a triglyceride level that is no higher than your high-density lipoprotein level on your cholesterol panel lipid profile. And so if your HDL is 60 with exercise, then your triglyceride should be 60. We recommend hemoglobin A1C at 5.2% or less. And we recommend a fasting insulin of 4.0 or less. Um, to do that, it's going to force you to be away from eating so much excessive starches and carbohydrates and fruits and nuts and seeds and, and uh, uh, dense carbohydrate-packed vegetables and move you to the more uh, rich proteins, uh, uh, meat, fish, chicken, uh, turkey, uh, shrimp, um, lobster, uh, fish, and uh, uh, eggs and things like this. So uh, that will help keep your blood sugars low. And we're in a very stressful world where the, cholesterol, uh, the um, cortisol uh, is impacting the uh, pituitary axis here, hypothalamic pituitary axis, signaling the menstrual cycles and the ovulation so that the progesterone uh, is not being uh, found to be cycled normally like it would be every month you would get an ovulation and a progesterone so that the lining of the uterus would be cleared out. Therefore, there's disruption in the lining and it builds up and then you get these heavier bleeds. Um, the use of over-the-counter uh, prescriptions that are um, aspirin and Motrin and um, uh, ibuprofen, these things promote um, this uh, bleeding and uh, can be a cause. Another thing is um, we are having a diet uh, that is so full of genetic modified uh, components and lectins, plant toxins that are harming the delicate one cell membrane lining of the uh, gut that you're getting many holes in it. And this is creating inflammation. Your immune system can get alarmed and get all kinds of gut symptomology. And you can actually leak uh, your blood through the uh, gut lining, through the inflammation of a colitis or um, uh, Crohn's kind of ulcerative colitis, inflammatory bowel disease scenario. Um, and then, of course, there's just uh, aspirin and ibuprofen alone can create ulcerations in the gut and create that. So all these things have to be looked at as to where this uh, lower blood is. Now, as to the production, uh, the toxins in the world bioaccumulate like heavy metals, lead, aluminum, arsenic. If you're getting scans, you're get, getting gadolinium. And so your bone marrow is going to also uh, be... Uh, challenge with the oxidative stress of these heavy metals. So th this is a whole world uh, of pollutants and toxins and sticky blood sugars and high fructose uh, corn syrup and um, uh, over-the-counter supplementation, stress and uh, confusion of the uh, uh, pituitary hypothalamic uh, hormonal axis. All these things come into play. 
besides which the diet is deficient in so many nutrients, uh, like not eating enough meat with a poor signaling from uh, commercial uh, interests. So these are all the things that we would be talking about in a visit with someone with a hemoglobin of 7.9. Uh, we uh, address all these. We want to make sure the gut and the lining and the diet is disinflaming. We want to make sure that the menstrual cycle is having a progesterone cyclical two weeks out of every month coverage. So we often give uh, supplemental natural progesterone uh, cycling to help make sure these menstrual cycles are orderly. We give uh, natural herbal uh, uh, iron in the form of our product is called Hemavite and uh, we have our women use these herbal uh, little tiny tablets uh, roughly two, three times a day. Uh, and then we do encourage them uh, to find out what their blood type is. Is If they are a blood type A uh, person, their digestion and ability to absorb minerals is diminished. So we would encourage them to use a digestive enzyme along with a multi-mineral, which will have magnesium, potassium, and chromium, and uh, other uh, vital nutrients. Uh, we also ask them to lower their blood sugar, and we also ask them uh, to uh, be more uh, generous with their protein and healthy fats. That, that would be the start, um, I think, vitamin D3 with K2. Uh, MK7 uh, is very valuable. So that's that's how uh, we approach it, and uh, hopefully that's a help to you. Next question is from Tara. She says, hi, Dr. Rita. Can you recommend any supplements for healthy brain? I've been eating very clean but need to implement more to heal a damaged brain. Thank you. Well, Tara, um, the uh, brain is uh, going to be impacted. I don't know if you recall at Thanksgiving when we all tend to overindulge and eat too much, you get sleepy and your thinking isn't as sharp. So a uh, lower carbohydrate uh, diet consistently is what we need to uh, do foundationally. And we need to exercise. Exercise uh, is a very um, valuable for dementia, for Alzheimer's, uh, for memory problems. Um, having natural hormones at healthy levels. So uh, we can see uh, diminished memory and cognitive uh, challenges with young women who are on the birth control pill because their natural hormones are um, uh, dropping. Uh, vitamin D um, is very helpful uh, to the brain as well as um, uh, getting a good night's sleep uh, and vitamin D3 will help with that along with a methylated B complex, in particular, pantothenic acid. So um, those are just some starters, Tara. Um, uh, and, and I don't know your age or, or what your scenario is, but these are the directions. We could also talk about the microcirculation to your brain and uh, listening uh, to uh, classical music, uh, reading complex uh, uh, puzzles, doing things challenging uh, for the brain to exercise that there's many uh, brain behavioral uh, trainings on the computer that you could use. So hopefully that'll give you some cues as to where we'd go. Harlow then says, God bless you, Dr. Rita, praying always for you. Harlow, thank you very much. We do need prayers and protection uh, so that we can continue doing functional medicine and uh, uh, have the private patient-doctor relationship uh, uh, preserved and the authority of the doctors uh, to do what's best for their patient rather than some corporation or insurance group uh, giving edicts about how we should uh, manage our patient. Certainly, we should stay informed and aware, but uh, ultimately, the doctor and that patient have to have their um, uh, answer. And so, we uh, appreciate prayer. Number one, without God, uh, uh, we're nothing here. Um, oh, so truth through the Bible said, I am 37 and have very healthy periods as well. 
All right. So then you see, then we would be shifting more to your blood type and your uh, gut absorption and your diet uh, more likely uh, uh, truth of the Bible. So uh, that's how I would find out what your blood type is, discuss uh, uh, inflammatory bowel disease and um, uh, have your stool tested and um, consider also uh, things that would help your gut. Uh, Dolphin says, I now have spiders and spots in both my eyes. Uh, any prevention from this getting worse? Any help to make it better? My eyesight has gotten a lot worse now that I'm in my late 60s. Yeah, that's not uncommon, and we're seeing it, unfortunately, uh, in younger and younger uh, age groups. And uh, your uh, eyeball has um, a magnificent uh, um uh, design and the fluid inside the eyeball itself is a, a liquid that has protein in it. And the protein, if it gets oxidized from stress and um, uh, free radical uh, reactive oxygen species, particles, damaged fragments, uh, then it will uh, cross-link uh, proteins and make little tiny uh, connections that can then start making a uh, web. So uh, you have to be well hydrated. So water is the number one anticoagulant. Water is the number one um, antioxidant, you could say. And so you should have to drink plenty of water, half your weight in pounds as ounces every day. Exercise is important. That's the hydraulic pump, a low carb diet. Uh, when I had my first floater show up in my life, um, I fasted for five days. And uh, then uh, that floater tremendously uh, uh, went away, I would say, within a week. I did it five days. I would say it went from down 90%, uh, and I can't even see it right now as I speak to you. Uh, systemic enzymes, vitalzyme, vascuzyme, uh, proteozyme on an empty stomach. I was taking like five, three times a day while I was fasting. And uh, uh, so uh, a low carb, uh, enzymes, exercise, adequate hydration, good night's sleep because you heal at night. Um, CC's uh, Teach ABC uh, says, what are your recommendations for a healthy 19 year old recently diagnosed with type one uh, diabetes? Well, I would get, see a good functional uh, doctor. Um, there's a wonderful doctor out there by the name of Richard K. Bernstein, B-U-R-N-S-T-E-I-N, medical doctor. And uh, he's 89 years old right now. And he is still practicing full time. Uh, and he was diagnosed himself at age 11 with uh, insulin-dependent diabetes, and he's 89 now. So he's had, uh, what, uh, 79, 78 years of uh, insulin-dependent diabetes. And he is on a very aggressive, uh, low-carb uh, diet. His uh, carbohydrate daily consumption would probably be 20 grams or less per day, a, a rigorous exercise, even at 89. Uh, and he is uh, very much in uh, for uh, uh, good hydration, uh, and he would uh, agree with the systemic enzymes, the vitamin D, K2, uh, uh, vitamin D3, K2, and the methylated B vitamins. Find out your blood type. I would say Juice Plus uh, is what I use as my antioxidant uh, because it's the fruit, vegetables, and berry um, phytonutrients that are left over after you rinse away all the fructose and the starch in the fruits, vegetables, and berries. Taking the fruit, vegetable, and berry capsule uh, would provide a tremendous phytochemical protection. And uh, Dr. Uh, Bernstein uh, has no uh, retinopathy of the eyes, no peripheral vascular disease. He, uh, before he started doing this, I think he was in his late 40s, he already had kidney disease and he uh, was starting to have retinopathy and all of these have uh, resolved. So that's the direction, get a good uh, functional doctor, uh, look up Dr. Um, 
Richard K. Bernstein on YouTube, on YouTube, and listen to his lectures. Uh, he has a book out on this, and uh, you could go from there. Uh, tremendously find out his blood type and probiotic. It's felt most of these um, insulin-dependent diabetes are from an autoimmune attack on the pancreas. So the healthy, uh, free-range, uh, free-range grass-fed uh, uh, meats, fish, turkey, chicken, beef uh, are very, very valuable. Um, I personally, if it was my 19-year-old uh, grandson uh, or son, I would uh, start them on a carnivore diet uh, right away. Let's see. Uh, Truth through the Bible says they also wanted to do blood transfusion because of the anemia. Told them no, I have GERD. Uh, they also want to do colonoscopy, endoscopy. I also take apple cider vinegar to help with my stomach. All right, so true, true through the Bible, you're doing some um, healthy things, and your uh, physicians that are watching over you are correct in wanting to uh, do the colonoscopy, endoscopy. The mere fact that you're having symptomology with the uh, gut um, uh, reflux symptoms are indicating that you're having some kind of uh, gastrointestinal irritation, inflammation. So follow their advice. I do believe that the um, acid in the apple cider vinegar uh, when you eat food is a healthy thing to do. Um, we uh, typically do see people get transfusions when the uh, hemoglobin is uh, under 7.0, 7, uh, you're 7.9, I think you said. Uh, but if they wanted to do that, they might know other features about your general health and age. And uh, I would just follow their advice. Uh, Dolores uh, says, hi, Dr. Rita, I'm 71. And uh, last few days, I noticed I am bleeding, not much. I have been taking progesterone and estradiol for the last few years. I am under the care of Dr. Kaur, God, uh, God bless. All right, so uh, uh, postmenopausal bleeding uh, in our training, at least back in the 70s and 80s, uh, when I went through uh, my medical training, uh, in postmenopausal women, we're always concerned for endometrial cancer. But now that so many women are on natural hormones, the vast majority of this is when levels get um, um, imbalanced uh, and the progesterone drops. And when the progesterone drops, sometimes women forget to take it. Uh, that is a signal, just like when you have progesterone drop uh, when you're a normal woman menstruating with ovulation each month. When the progesterone drops, that is a signal for the uterus to clean itself out. So uh, you need to see your doctor, have a pelvic exam. You need a transvaginal uh, ultrasound uh, to look at your uterus and the inside lining of the uterus, see how thick it is, okay? And if it is not thick at all and it looks very healthy, uh, that may be all they do. And they look at your hormone levels and adjust it. But very often they'll do a procedure called an endometrial biopsy. It's an in-office procedure where it's like getting a pap smear, but they go in a little deeper into the uterus to get a little sampling of the endometrial lining. So this has to be uh, uh, followed up uh, with your pelvic, your ultrasound, your endometrial biopsy, your hormone levels. So do get a hold of your doctor and get those things addressed. Uh, but the vast, vast majority are, are benign. Amila says, uh, is it safe to use Armour Thyroid if it's past the expiration date? I noticed that the shelf life is only one year. Most of this is usually just um, uh, regulations that are being followed by the pharmaceutical uh, uh, situation. I have uh, samples uh, that um, are years old, and, and that's what I use for my thyroid replacement. So I have found it to be um, not an issue. Uh, if it's been exposed to humidity or the cap is off or something, then all bets are off. But if it's been basically sealed uh, and, and you have it, then uh, I don't see if it's a year or two old that it would have any problem. Uh, but see your doctor, have it tested, and let them know that you're using a, a thyroid dose that is over the one-year uh, expiration just so that they know in case they do see any variation uh, when you see your doctor. Christina says, hello, Dr. Rita. Any tips to uh, recover from wisdom tooth extraction? Thank you. 
Well, if you just had it today, then I would fast uh, for a day and a half. I would not eat anything except chicken broth and beef broth, just so that uh, the healing is stimulated. Uh, if you fast, growth hormone goes up to repair and heal up things far quicker than if your body starts seeing you take in uh, food. Uh, this will uh, diminish your growth hormone and repair signals. So fasting, chicken broth, beef broth, not bone broth. We're talking about just the bouillon cube in hot water of chicken bouillon cube or a beef bouillon cube so that you get your salts and electrolytes. And uh, if you uh, would do that, uh, if you're hungry at all, you could take a tablespoon of... Uh, olive oil, um, extra virgin, or you could put a tablespoon of butter in your coffee. I don't know how comfortable you are with fasting, but that's a tremendous way to do it. Then I would get uh, um, Argentan silver or colloidal silver over the counter. I think it's called sovereign silver. And I would swish and then gargle and then swallow uh, a teaspoon three, four times a day. And taking systemic enzymes after a tooth extraction will help get rid of the inflamed, cut up, damaged uh, debris area and clean up all this uh, damage where the, the cell membrane was poked through. And the inflammation will go down far faster if you can uh, fast for like uh, 36 hours. And then, of course, uh, always follow your dentist's advice. And uh, that, that is usually what we do. Make sure you're on vitamin D as well, vitamin D3 with K2. Um, Christina says, hello, Dr. Rita. Any tips to recover? Oh, no, we did that wisdom tooth one. Um, Truth through the Bible says, I have tachycardia episodes because of my stomach. Wondering if it could be a large hernia and was wondering safer way of besides endoscopy, uh, such as a CT or MRI without contrast. Thanks for everything. Uh, no, I would follow your uh, doctor's advice uh, where they can literally see uh, physical real-time the lining with an endoscopy and colonoscopy. Um, the other thing is um, the tachycardia, racing heartbeat, uh, may actually also be related to your low uh, blood count as well. So um, this is something that is serious and you need to follow with your doctor and I would be in favor of those items, uh, even uh, the, the transfusion. Um, and uh, then see your doctor about trying to prevent uh, the inflammation of your GERD and stuff. Uh, Rosa says, hi, Dr. Rita. Is it beneficial to take MCT oil with dinner? I cannot take it on an empty stomach while I fast because it gives me a slight stomach ache. I'm taking it to help my brain. 71 year old um, blood type B, I, it's going to be beneficial. Um, very often, uh, medium chain triglycerides can be put into an herbal tea or coffee, and you might find uh, that is a nice way to do it. It probably is somewhat uh, better absorbed uh, in that fashion, but you will get benefit if you take it uh, with your meal. So um, I'm not going to say no to that. So, yes, you can do that. Uh, and truth through the Bible says, well, God bless you, Dr. Rita. Okay, praise the Lord. Um, Estrella says, uh, hi, Dr. Rita. My aunt had chemotherapy a few years ago, and one side effect was neuropathy. She still has neuropathy and is painful and keeps her from going out much. What do you recommend uh, to cure this? Uh, and then she goes on to say, are there any supplements uh, – you offer to help. I would be, I'd go on a carnivore diet. And I say carnivore because the phospholipids that make up the cell membrane here, this is a double layer of these fats like this that go all around the cell and create the boundaries. It's uh, rich in eating meat and fish and chicken with the skin on it and uh, lobster, shrimp, crab and egg yolks and, and all these wonderful things. And nerves have a sheath around them rich in these phospholipids and special lipids, sphingomyelin and stuff like that. That's why they call it a myelin sheath. And by eating a carnivore uh, diet, you're forcing your body 
to have an abundance to uh, help repair this. And by reducing all the sugary, sticker, sticky, inflaming sugars, you don't have any idea of how you've been deceived as a people into thinking that your uh, breads and oatmeal and, and uh, sugared up yogurts and sugar lattes and your sugared uh, smoothies and your sugared juices and then on top of that, your treats, all this high fructose corn syrup and high carbs and these high tolerated uh, called normal fasting blood sugars are uh, actually creating sheer force sticky damage to the tiny capillaries, uh, cell uh, membrane damage here just from high blood sugar alone creates all this inflammation, which then will damage the membranes that are trying to heal from all the nerves and everywhere in your body. So this lifestyle of a healthy phospholipid, uh, uh, healthy fats is extremely beneficial in brain health, uh, uh, neurological uh, situations like multiple sclerosis, um, um, ALS, uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, uh, all, all our body, every cell in our body is this double membrane and it's rich in these foods and it's absolutely lousy and poor in a vegan diet. So uh, that's the direction I would go, uh, number one. Besides which, uh, it will get the sugar down and it'll get rid of the inflammation and the uh, food toxins uh, from uh, healthy foods, even spinach is high in oxalate. And many of these people are out there buying these silly green drinks that are uh, you know, uh, made up to have vitamins and a powder. And spinach is a huge component of these green drinks, which is full, way above the dose of oxalates that you should have that contribute to damaging your cell membranes. So that's how I would go there. Um, <clears throat> let's see, Robert Pinsky says, do you balance electrolytes if you are taking a potassium sparing diuretic medicine? Um, yes, uh, I still think it's a smart thing to take uh, something like TLC uh, multiminerals uh, to uh, ensure that you have a, a good potassium, magnesium, uh, calcium, and uh, chromium, and and uh, supplementation because not every person responds to these prescription medicines. And if you look on the, the uh, uh, list of the risks of taking these medicines, they will still say you have to check it, even if it's potassium sparing. He goes on to say, if sodium is flushed out and potassium is not, it could be a problem. How do you test that? Well, you have to have a, a lab to test it. Um, I, I typically do not see that as a problem. Uh, most of these uh, medications and your doctor will do a chemistry and check that. It, usually they're, they're very safe. Kate says, can I drink black coffee before and or after taking Vascuzan? I do it all the time. I, I take you know my water, I have my balance. So I can't have one of these unless I have one of these. And I'm doing it all the time. So yes, Kate, you can. Harlow says, I asked you last week about spironolactone for high blood pressure. Were you able to get any information on that? I forget, uh, Harlow. I'm going to have to write myself a note. I didn't. And um, spironolactone. And what was your question about it? It said uh, for high blood pressure. Are you able to get any information? So forgive me, I just didn't do that. Way, way, way too busy. And here's, here's my birthday present. Uh, all of you who said happy birthday for, this is my, the next book I'm starting to work with on reading. So I'm, I'm a busy lady, so I, I'm not trying to get myself out of it, Harlow, but I will look into this. And, and this, this is a wonderful mechanism to help your doctor stay up and on top of everything. So I'm very much happy to uh, uh, be challenged like that. And then uh, Truth of what Bible says, do you uh, telehealth appointments or in person only? No, we do telehealth also, yes. Uh, Robert uh, goes on to say, 
<laughs> a doctor asked what my dad did for work, and I said he was a valet driver. He said, oh, no, you might be at risk for parking, Parkinson's disease. <laughs> Parkinson's disease. That is so cute, Robert. That is so cute. And I didn't remember the one I wanted to bring up, but thank you. Uh, Kate says, my mom seems to be having memory issues. What do you recommend for first stages of looking into this? Well, again, the circulation to your brain, the tiny, tiny little, uh, you know, uh, like spider web uh, capillaries, let one red blood cell through at a time. And that's the delivery right to the cell membrane to help that brain and every other cell in your body. So we do, do, we do EDTA chelation therapy to enhance the blood flow and perfusion. We tell you to exercise and uh, we ask you to get the sticky sugars down and we ask you to get the protein and the healthy fats to repair those injuries. And then we ask um, uh, if we can give natural hormones. Estradiol is very helpful in uh, the brain of a woman uh, to help her with her memory. Because one of the side effects that is always complained about when menopause, hit, menopause hits is a uh, foggy brain memory loss. Um, so that's where we would begin. Uh, we would use lots of water, uh, systemic enzymes, and it usually works. Uh, Robert goes on to say, above, I was referring to an SGLT2 uh, above at, let's see what all right so S L G T two so you're doing um uh, talking about something like Ozempic um not sure but um I wrote it down so I have to look that up let's go to some of these emailed questions I think some of you are online here we've answered some of them already um, the first one I have is, I'm a 28-year-old female. Uh, do you have any experience with or thoughts about CRPS? Oh, CRPS, chronic uh, pain syndrome. Chronic uh, recurring pain syndrome. Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. E-L-E-R-S-D-A-N-L-O-S. Any help would be appreciated, specifically heart racing, dizzy upon standing, passing out episodes, <clears throat> also possible seizures, at which time I get eyelid spasms as well as digestive spasms, inability to speak, neck, leg, arm, tick, varies between those uh, skin, pales, uh, a pale skin, uh, speech slightly garbled as all function gradually returns, varied in length predominantly in the evening uh, recently, but seems triggered by extreme temperatures. A 28-year-old. Okay, well, you are obviously under the care of a neurologist and a uh, specialist uh, to have this chronic pain, recurring pain syndrome or Ehlers-Danlos. Now, Ehlers-Danlos is um, a connective tissue disorder uh, and they have linked that with um, genes, uh, some uh, breakdown in genetic um, for the uh, elastin collagen. Uh, and these are usually people who have very hyper uh, flexibility, very loose uh, flex joints. And um, they relate that to that. The chronic recurring pain syndrome is um, damage to the uh, nerve. Usually these are in uh, distal uh, nerves or in your leg. And um, there are many things that can do it. But everything I had said to the other uh, question about the myelin sheath and all that is how we would approach it and why we would favor a carnivore diet and uh, why we would uh, favor exercise, adequate hydration, Natural hormones are your general contractors that help to uh, give uh, orders to uh, repair these things, including the lining of the, the nerves. Um, the carnivore diet would get out any inflammatory little cytokines from the damage in your gut from various foods that you may or may not have. 
All these things should be worked up. I would have a good functional doctor see you working with your neurologist, working with your um, uh, internist uh, or your um, uh, seizure specialist. Uh, EDTA chelation will improve that tiny web-like uh, and you should find out what your gadolinium level is that could be aggravating it. It sounds like you've certainly had some scans and so forth. So those are the directions I would go uh, re-listen to this and listen back to what I said about uh, the person with the uh, nerve damage from chemotherapy. Jackie says, uh, hello, Dr. Rita. You are so appreciated with all the knowledge that you share. I am new to my area. Thank you for the compliment. Uh, I am seeking a functional medicine practitioner as well as an endocrinologist. I have Hashimoto's thyroid for almost 40 years. My labs are always stable and I have been on levothyroxine 0.88 uh, microgram, uh, uh, milligram for many years, stable dose. The functional medicine doctor did a iodine skin patch test. That's where they take some liquid iodine and they'll rub it on uh, your skin and then they'll see how long it takes for your body to absorb that. Um, and so he did the patch. Mine faded uh, by eight hours. He asked, uh, he has prescribed iodorol, a 12.5 milligram iodine tablet. I'm a little concerned because it involves my thyroid. I am a little more tired. I have noticed uh, drier hair um, and my nails aren't as strong. Uh, they aren't brittle though. What is your advice on this? If you would take it or how do you follow it? What can be expected? Thank you. Well, again, you have to follow with your doctors that, that are there uh, locally, but in general, Jackie, uh, if it took eight hours, uh, for you to have that absorbed, uh, that's on the slow side. So it's implying that you are deficient in iodine. And I think if you read Dr. David Brownstein, uh, his book on iodine, uh, he has done the greatest uh, work on this. He's a family practice doctor, I think up in uh, Michigan. And uh, the data sh uh, shows at least published there that about 96.7% of all Americans are deficient in iodine. That puts a stress on our thyroid gland uh, because you have to have iodine to make a thyroid hormone work. And then if you have an autoimmune attack on the tissue of your thyroid, hurting the production of thyroid hormone and a deficiency of the salt iodine, then it's a double whammy. Therefore, um, levothyroxine is uh, uh, a T4 and your body has to convert it into the active T3. So that's another uh, point of which you may not or uh, be as good at. So uh, I think there's wisdom in giving um, iodine because this test appears to have showed you are deficient in it. I use the iodorol, uh, which is the product uh, made by Dr. David Brownstein. It's a 12.5 milligram, which is a very low dose. Um, and uh, I would favor that uh, very much and uh, follow, follow up with your functional doctor. Looks like he's on the right track or she's on the right track with you. Cynthia says, um, I'm 42 years old and had unexplained bleeding between uh, periods. Uh, a CT scan discovered I had a cyst on my left ovary. The bleeding stopped at the end of May. I just started bleeding in between periods again, three months later. Is this something that could indicate a more serious issue? Thank you for answering my question. I hope you have a blessed week. Thank you, Cynthia. Yes, this should be followed. But again, you're in that, in my opinion, women are going into menopause too early. You don't have ovulation every month. Therefore, you don't have uh, your estradiol uh, balanced with progesterone which means you're gonna get into estrogen dominance, which means you're gonna have an uneven lining and buildup of the uterine lining and you'll start seeing these irregular cycles. So I would see a doctor, yes, I would get your hormone levels done and I would ask about natural uh, progesterone uh, used uh, day 15 through 25 of your menstrual cycle 
so that when you have a menstrual cycle, 15 days later from the start of it, you would start using the progesterone for 10 days every day, and that would behave like if you did ovulate, and it'll help uh, with uh, regulation. Let them get the pelvic ultrasound, take a look at that, see if there's another uh, cyst on the ovary, things like that, but do follow up, but that's how we would approach it. Uh, Zoila, Z-O-I-L-A says, do you recommend creatinine supplementation for bone health, uh, cardiac health, insulin sensitivity? I do, but I do it in the form of telling my patients to eat meat, fish, chicken, turkey, um, eggs, um, uh, pork, um, lobster, crab, uh, shrimp. And, and that's how I would say get it the natural way. Uh, Ariel says, both my eyes now have big spiders and floaters. I think we answered the one about floaters. Leah says, good evening. My husband has athlete's foot and I need to know how to get rid of it. What are your recommendations, please? Thank you, and God bless. Well, uh, try to uh, get him a new pair of shoes and uh, white uh, uh, socks or, or uh, pads to put on, uh, and then uh, try and have his uh, shoes uh, clean uh, or new, and then wash his feet with Selsum Blue, uh, so shampoo, you know, you can go to the drugstore and get Selsun Blue shampoo. Selenium is a natural antifungal. That's all I ever wash with or shower with. And I make sure that I scrub it in with my little brush into my toenails and my feet. And uh, then I try and keep my shoes off and walk barefoot as much as I can the bulk of the day. Like I'm sitting right here and my shoes are off. So my, my feet are outside of my shoes right now. <laughs> But that's what I would do. And then he's got to be on a low-carb diet because fungus tends to grow in the feet of those who clog up their capillaries with so much sugar, and then the fungus starts taking over. Uh, that's beginning points that we would do for any athlete's foot. Uh, Leah says, good evening. Oh, no, that was uh, the athlete's foot. So then the next one is, hi, Dr. Rita. Does it work to get iodine from sea kelp supplements? And the answer is yes, but it's variable. And then um, I do have concern about um, the dose, and usually it's inadequate. That 12.5 milligram, you would have to eat a lot of sea kelp to try and get 12.5 uh, milligrams, maybe three little bowls of it. And I, I don't think you're going to be doing that. So, yes, you can get it from there. Then the sea has a lot of... Uh, toxins in it and then you have to worry about the processor i like dr brownstein's methodology of this and getting it in the tablet form that is testable uh constance says <clears throat> i am fasting because of stomach pains and nausea what is best to eat after fasting um when i start uh uh someone on a fast and then they say what to eat uh, I very often uh, will tell them a soft boiled or poached egg uh, is good, or I will ask them uh, to eat some very easily digestible soft fish like salmon. Uh, these are the ones that um, I would recommend uh, to do, do that with. Uh, Jay says, what would you recommend to treat a mycobacterial infection, mycobacterial infection in the lungs? Uh, testing is being done to determine the type of bacteria, and that's where the family of tuberculosis comes from. Mycobacteria are essentially cell wall-less bacteria, and there's all kinds. And so the what, what is called the community walking pneumonia is a mycobacterium, uh, and uh, usually uh, it takes a, uh, and he goes on to say the pulmonologist wants him on three antibiotics, which he wants to avoid. Can Argentin be used with a nebulizer? The answer is yes. Uh, are there any vitamins or supplements that would help? Thank you. Well, uh, I don't know who you are, Jay, what your age, what other comorbidities you have. You have a pulmonologist, um, and I would follow their advice. But uh, sugars depress the immune system, so a low-carbohydrate diet is critical uh, so you don't depress your immune system. Never eat late. 
doing the Argentin, uh, you can uh, swish and swallow. Make sure you don't have any dental uh, work that needs to be done because that can seed uh, through saliva and spit bacteria into your trachea and stuff that will promote it. So uh, have good dental health, see your dentist if anything needs to be done there. But Argentin swish and swallow uh, helps nebulizing it, helps uh, taking systemic enzymes, helps reduce the inflammation. Remember those alveoli are just literally made up of uh, uh, phospholipid and protein uh, membranes. That's all it is. So you need, if you could go carnivore, that would be a great way to hype that up. Uh, vitamin D3, K2 to get your um, vitamin D level up to about 80 to 100, that would be important. You could come and do uh, or find a, a place that will do high dose vitamin C uh, treatments. And uh, uh, the other thing would be um, N acetylcysteine. Uh, N acetylcysteine helps with um, uh, expectoration. Uh, and clearing of the lung uh, uh, mucosa uh, as well. And then iodine, to use uh, that iodorol uh, one a day, uh, iodine is a natural expectorant. And um, uh, you work with your pulmonologist and I would obey what he says. I wouldn't uh, fool around with it and, and get that uh, uh, addressed. EDTA chelation can improve the tiny web-like um, blood supply that brings all this healing phospholipids and uh, enzymes to disinflame it and, and stuff. So EDTA chelation uh, with the vitamin C in it, that's our enhanced chelation is something that would help too. Shani says, can I safely get off my thyroid medicines? Well, Shani, that uh, depends on a multitude of things. You have to see a good doctor uh, who is familiar with lifestyle management things that tend to uh, complicate thyroid performance. There are certain foods that are goiterogenic foods. So you could go Google what foods promote uh, poor thyroid function, and you could avoid that. And uh, to see if your thyroid um, need of medicines would diminish. Um, getting your stomach uh, checked for food allergens because uh, they often are associated with inflammation and underfunctioning of the thyroid or autoimmune uh, thyroid disease. Um, you could get your iodine level checked. Uh, there is a 24-hour urine collection that Dr. David Brownstein would refer to. There is that patch test that other lady brought up. But so many things have to be looked at, Shawnee, to see if it's possible. Work with your doctor. Start looking at a functional doctor that will help you uh, look at ways to improve your whole metabolism so maybe your need will diminish. Uh, Dorothy asked the question, what is the difference between a virus and a cold? Well, uh, you know, viruses are everywhere and that we have a microbiome that lives in our nose, in our mouth, in our teeth. We have a bacterial microbiome uh, that lives on our skin, uh, some particular to our scalp, uh, some uh, in the urogenital area. And so we, we have these viruses, fungi, bacteria everywhere. And uh, they're in the air, and so we inhale these. And if you don't have a good vitamin D level, and, and if your blood sugars are usually too high, depressing your white blood cell mobility and ability to do phagocytosis and eat these things up, then you're going to succumb to a viral replication of this and uh, get what we call the runny nose cough because most of this just stays usually in the hypopharynx right here. So uh, now we call this phenomena a cold, but is it allergies? Is it some uh, dust that you were uh, working on with spraying or painting in your home? could be all of these various things, but typically a cold is a virus uh, that is localized to the um, hypopharynx right there and is self-limiting. And that's why we believe very much in adequate vitamin D, a low carb diet. And we believe in um, Argentin silver nasal spray washes. You could even get a very dilute iodine in uh, a nasal rinse and you could use a neti pot to do that uh, with as well. 
Uh, Deanna says, news is making children wear masks again in school, and Biden announced new vaccines available in September. News also reported from a worker that her supervisor in Florida as medical official at hospital to get ready for epidemic of COVID, a plan to infect people. How will it be done? Well, we have to stay healthy and uh, God has made us fearfully and wonderfully well. And we have a marvelous immune system that has adjusted and uh, reacts to all these kind of challenges. Get your vitamin D level uh, always in that 80 to 100, 120 range. Uh, do that with a comprehensive chemistry so they can check your liver enzymes to make sure that's well handled. Um, be low carb uh, so you don't depress your immune system. Uh, have a very good multivitamin mineral that is rich in zinc. Um, and have some argentin or colloidal silver around or a little uh, Lugol solution, iodine solution you can dilute and use as a little oral uh, nasal rinse. Uh, use quercetin. Quercetin is a natural herb that is acts like ivermectin or hydroxychloroquine as a ionophore that helps draw in the zinc. The zinc will help stop your um, uh, ribosomes from copying the viral DNA and replicating them, and that's how zinc works. That's how quercetin and ivermectin work. So those are the things I would do. Uh, we went through all of this. Uh, I never masked. I never, uh, you know, requested anyone to mask. We didn't shut down, actually. I'm still working six days a week uh, because so many did shut down and doctors didn't show up. And <clears throat> But praise be to God that he kept me healthy, yet even though we're at uh, my birthday now and, and I'm uh, hitting the 70s and and. Uh, I wouldn't worry about a thing. Not any of my patients died from it. They weren't hospitalized and uh, everyone stayed well. And so this was uh, a, a lot of foolishness. And all of you who heard what I said uh, before understand it. Uh, Tiziana says, hi, Dr. Rita. My hubby was diagnosed with a stomach hernia and GERD reflux for which he has been taking an antacid. He has also been taking digestive enzymes. I would like for him to get off the antacid medication, which to me is counterproductive, especially when taking the digestive enzymes. I haven't been able to convince him yet. Is there anything you can say on the subject? Number one thing to do uh, with that scenario <clears throat> with um, reflux is uh, stop eating at 4 o'clock every day. Do not eat past 4 o'clock at all and uh, just leave it like that. I would get the uh, phospholipid powder, we call it phospholipids, which are all the fats here, that if you mix it with warm water and SBI protect, which is the amino acid proteins and immunoglobulins, and mix that and have that uh, every evening before you go to bed and every morning, do that faithfully and that should solve that problem. Uh, immediately. Don't eat past four o'clock. That's how I would start. And then Lisa says, hello, Dr. E. I recently heard Dr. Avery Jackson discuss the benefits of beta iodine nasal swab gargling with the same to kill COVID germs. Do you agree? Yes, we just said that. And if so, what amount of water with iodine to use to gargle? And is there a best brand you recommend? I don't use the iodine, so I don't have it on the top of my head, uh, Lisa. Instead, I use the Argentan silver, which uh, is the same uh, as far as protection. It's what we used here for the past several years, and I've used for uh, decades uh, for um, colds. What do you recommend for prevention and killing of the bacteria of a bladder infection? I've heard of a product called Uretract. Uretract and um, what's the other one? Uretract. One is a D-mannose. D-mannose is not absorbed. It's a type of sugar molecule that if you swallow it, it stays in the gut and comes out through the kidneys and it lines the bladder so bacteria don't uh, stick to it. And the, the other one, uretract and um, I forget the name of the other one, has uh, cranberry extract in it. So these are good preventative uh, things to do. Uh, 
And, uh, but if you're having problems, see your doctor, get a urine, clean catch culture and uh, have that followed. Um, and she goes on to say, I've been taking progesterone 300 milligrams orally for some time now. I recently read in your teaching transcript that you take Cocoro cream. Do you advise switching over to that? No, I don't. I'm just saying it's a very mild over the counter one. And I use it as a moisturizer. Um, if I'm getting dry and certainly the older I, I get, the drier I get. So it's a uh, very safe progesterone is very safe for men and women and children. Um, you know, what we're, we're swimming in it when we're conceived and, and born. So progesterone is very f friendly. Um, <clears throat> Veronica says, my son has been dealing with irritable bowel syndrome and acid reflux, as well as morning nausea for years now. He's only 24. He's seen doctors and tried different medicines, but nothing has worked. The last GI doctor performed a colonoscopy and endoscopy, and his conclusion was that it was most likely due to anxiety. What would you recommend since he hasn't been able to eat anything and feels weak and tired most of the time? Thank you so much for guiding us. God bless you. And God bless you, Veronica. Well, I'd find out my son's blood type because very often uh, blood type A um, acts like this because they have years of under di digestion uh, capacity and they are becoming um, uh, diminished in their nutrient ability to handle things, which help, uh, harms their mental focus and they become fat soluble deficient, vitamin D, depression, cell membrane made of the fat be uh, leaves all these little holes, micro inflammation, a sense of dis-ease which is misinterpreted as anxiety. And so he needs to see a good functional doctor that will work through all those issues and start to fix them up. I would immediately put him on vitamin D3, K2, uh, ten, uh, uh, D3, 10,000, K290 uh, for his mood and for his immune system. I would make him a carnivore, and if he is blood type A, I would have him use a digestive enzyme and work into that if it's difficult for him. But certainly use that phospholipid powder with SBI Protect powder, and that's how I would probably begin with him if I were seeing him. Find a good functional doctor. Uh, Sherry says, and I was diagnosed with a leaky gut with bacteria in my gut, and I was treated with can't. DIDA, probiotics, gluten, magnesium, super aloe, digestive enzymes for my constipation. The constipation has gotten better, but it's not completely cured. I don't know what else I can do. Can you please advise? I've been trying to have a healthy diet with minimum sugar and gluten-free. Uh, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's as well, and my constipation seems to linger on. Thank you so much. Sherry, I'm going to uh, say uh, the best way to heal a gut, the lining of the gut and these little holes that are poked into it, is to go on a absolute uh, elimination diet. And the best one out there is a carnivore diet. You get all these inflammatory plant, plant lectins out of your diet. And then you have the vast, dense phospholipids that need to heal. And if you would do that uh, eight weeks, 12 weeks, 100%, you should see this tremendously improve. And then finally, Lynn says, hi, Dr. Rita, do you have any suggestions to help alleviate a milder form of essential tremors in the hands? I'm 63, pharmaceuticals seem to work, but they have side effects just as bad. Same with Botox. Uh, Lynn, um, essential uh, tremors are, uh, we don't know the cause of them, but I believe it's pollution. I believe it's the micro damage to the myelin sheath surrounding your nerves and to the brain tissue. And so we would do all these things that promote the repair of the myelin sheath and do the EDTA chelation to improve the microcirculation. And um, our tremors tend to improve with doing chelation therapy, a low carb diet, uh, doing the uh, 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 carnivore type diet and taking enzymes and getting on natural hormones. That would be our beginning approach. And let's see, with that, we are 704. And uh, 
Uh, I think I'm not going to be able to get through the rest of these. So I'm going to keep this here and have them copy this. So Blondie and uh, uh, Cute Wild Amphibian, Harlow, Garden Fairy. Um, I will um, ask you to come next week um, and we'll go from there. All right. So in the meantime, uh, we give God all the glory. We thank you for your participation. Please like and subscribe. Please share with your family and friends. Tell them that they can go to our website and they can look up the topics of the questions and they can jump around to the areas that are uh, intriguing to them. And uh, please put a comment afterwards uh, how I could improve this, what you would like us to maybe do. You might be get tired of seeing me and want to see someone else. So in the meantime, uh, God bless and keep us all focused on him. He is uh, making us fearfully and wonderfully. So let's find out how he designed to heal us and work with our doctors. All right, take care. God bless.